so this is is it the last one of the side missions so we're gonna play as I want to say Ayumi sounds very ominous it's like to her final battle so the black spider clan is after more than just the demon statue. For you, for the village, find the eye. So mysterious, and then five seconds later, it's like, it's the, the character from the thing. So, I know, they're building tension. Some dudes kind of look like Phantom X. No, I was killed by a pinwheel. A shame. It's a pretty explosive pinwheel, to be fair. <laughs> oh no, a purple cloak. What was that dumb fucking pose that she fell in? She could have done a really sick moon pose, like a T pose or something. Looks like I found the right place. Who are you talking to? Ah, great style. I like her use play style because it's lots of fast hits, but she's quite low damaging, so you know. Nice reuse of the stage, but at night this time. Be a nice idea. I'm just getting wrecked, hang on. Uh, oh, I keep just taking hits because I'm bad. Something about certain voice actors for certain characters, and it, like I can't put my finger on it, but it annoys me. But whenever a fighting or character action character is like, yeah, ha, I'm just like, this person has never thrown a punch in their real life, and if they have, it's cringe as fuck. Like you, you're two steps away from saying hi, yeah. Please stop with the Karate Kid bullshit, please. It's, you're ruining it. it. Doesn't sound cool. You sound like a loser. Which reminds me of a story of when my secondary school tried to like teach kickboxing and taekwondo to a bunch of like white upper middle class Uyghur people who were like desperately trying to prove they're gangster and were like playing Def Jam on loop. And it was the cringest shit. Like, some of my friends went because, like, I already was learning kickboxing in a different place. And, like, yeah, I was a huge loser in secondary school because I wasn't cringe like these we <laughs> weirdos. I was gonna say weebs, but they really weren't. They were like, I don't even know what. They're trying to be ghetto, but their mummy and daddies were lawyers and doctors. And like, anyway, short, long story short, like, they literally had to call an assembly and tell them We're gonna cancel the Taekwondo and kickboxing classes because too many of you guys are, like, not taking it seriously and, like, the, the coach couldn't stop laughing at all of these white middle class people punching the air and going Like, instead of just being, like, making a breath release sound or anything, we're going, GANGSTA! Gangster, gangster! Every single time they threw a punch. Like, one, two, gangster! Oh yeah, the hood man! And she. They, these are professional martial arts coaches, and they're just sat there like. Oh my god. <laughs> like. I guess the equivalent now would be to end every single combo you did in shadow boxing with a dab. It's just so fucking cringe. So take it seriously, or 
you know, not too seriously, just as a fucking sport, like, oh, and they were like, a oh, real hard man, and it's like, you're a skinny, spotty loser, <laughs> and you're saying that shit. Half of them work in, like, home base now. Oh, it was like that. It's still, like, that was, like, at least 15 years ago, and it still hurts me in my fucking soul. I still sometimes remember that shit and think. Every time I see Def Jam, actually. It's like, oh. Oh. Like, right in the, like, because I do a lot of, I do a lot of, I, I'm lazy, but I, I do, I, I'm really interested in martial arts, and I occasionally do Muay Thai and things like that. And I like that shit, and I, I tried jujitsu a bunch and realized that it's too technical and I suck, so I quit. But like, um, I've been doing all sorts of stuff. I've done sander, I've done K1, kickboxing, I've done like jujitsu, like I said, I've done Muay Thai in various places all over the world. And like, I think it's that that really brings it close to home when you're like, oh, it's Fucking losers, <laughs> you know what I mean? Just, mm, the extreme internal, all your organs tense up and go, that's so cringe. Anyway, that's what this reminds me of. Or the stereotype of a lot of female Japanese uh, fighting game characters where they can't be seen as too scary and aggressive, like, oh, I'm gonna kill you, like Akuma. They, they've gotta be like, more like, oh, I'm still a feminine girl, because otherwise the patriarchy will dissolve overnight. So they, um, they all, all go, ooh, here I go, before they're super, and you'll think, who the fuck says that? Do you think that there's a single Thai boxer, male or female, in the entire thing who, like, during a fight just goes, before they're about to combo, so here I go, like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> like, you know? I know it's an anime as fuck fighting game. Like the last time I saw it was like Videl in Fighter Z. Every time, and like I love playing as uh, Josie Rizal in Tekken Seven, and everything she does outside of having that killer move set hurts me because it's like Muay Thai representative before Fakaram came in and she's just like oh no I, I punched the person and it's like you're like it's kind of funny because she's so kick-ass but like at the same time it's like why is this thing of like you can't just have a badass female martial artist it's gonna be they're either sexy or they're like scared of their own abilities or they're nervous or uncertain like the fuck is that like I know there's loads of strong female fighting game characters but like how many of them rely on just sex appeal or being a timid little mouse child it's just oh it annoys me so much <laughs> it shouldn't annoy me oh I went through it oh fuck it fucked up but anyway I'm gonna shut up about my own rants Ayumi's really fun because it's lots of light hits and you know you've seen my other I, I love the tompers and shit and it's like kind of like did it did it did it did it and then getting out and then did it did it I really like that speed more than anything probably because then I can be spammy and rush down oh we're not finished I was like why gate no open because spider people on their tiny spider feet Yeah. I can hear it. I don't know, I can't tell you precisely why it annoys me, but it just does. It's just... But then again, it's not limited to women or female characters in fighting games and character leadership. <laughs> just, just spam hell fighters. <laughs> in uh, these games, it's some guys as well, and you're just like, oh, it, like... You know, you can't take anything from like an anime fighting game and go It looks it looks cool on screen and then you think Imagine someone did this shit in real life, it would be so fucking cringe. Which you know, there's an entire like section 
of people uh, in like that you can look at online who are like trying to be DBZ characters in real life and be super cool and like anime and it's like it doesn't translate into the real world and it looks fucking ridiculous. <laughs> cringe man. You're like, oh don't do that, that's cringe. Oh no, you're hurting me. You're hurting me psychically. Sometimes I do it to piss off my students. Because it's so cringe that you can feel an entire classroom, so I do it ironically to piss them off. If someone mentions like their favorite animes and I say, oh I watch DBZ, and as a joke I'm like, Kamehameha, and they're just like, oh I fucking hate you, don't do that ever again. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, because every new class, if you do that, they all just recoil and suck their teeth like, oh. Why would you do that to me? Because it's cringe, and we all had that one guy. We all knew that one guy at primary, or like secondary, or even high school, who was like convinced that he could like, if, that it was so cool that he thought he could do this shit, or like this cringe shit you hear where like people are Naruto running into real fights, and you're like, oh fuck. <laughs> We, we all know it, you all know what I mean. You've, or, you've met one guy who's Naruto run unironically at one point in his life because no one, he didn't see it before. He didn't see someone else do it and get the secondhand cringe. He's the guy who posited the cringe on everyone else. He's like, yeah, I'm cool, shut up. I'm from the Leaf Village and you're like, oh. And then he starts wearing a headband. <laughs> This is just a big, wide area, again, unused in the main game, and they were just like, oh, you know what, we're just gonna put this huge thing. And it's really nice. I feel like you can tell that these were made, maybe they were made later, because they feel like they've got more detail and there's more, like, stuff. Even though this floor is empty, you can see that there was more effort into the tile work. And like it feels more detailed and more HD kind of thing, and it's more populated. Those rooms in Volf's Castle, they felt like there was just a big empty nothing going on and on and on, copy pasted, copy pasted, like the tiles were just the same forever. And you were just like, ah. Oh. Ah, oh, that wasn't cool. Doing well, shit. I keep missing everyone with my swallow dive. I love how her Ninpo is like just a big. It doesn't have any targeting, it just smashes everything around it. I'm just taking hits, man. Ugh. Also, I don't really like Ayumi's outfit here, but like she has other outfits that are better, but her default is just like, yes, a ninja would just wear this shit and then put a giant bow on herself. Like, look at this shit. This is not ninjury at all. Ah! Oh no, an old woman. Well, well, if it isn't the Tenjin girl. Why is your voice you the distorting the in-game audio? I thought you died a long time ago. Where is the eye? <laughs> Ayumi really loves butterflies and the butterfly motif. That's like is this what you're looking for? I put it in my ass. <laughs> what have you done? She literally put it in her fucking ass. <laughs> nah, it's in my ass. The power of the dragon's eye. How the dragon eyes my ass. Look at this weird shaped. She 
not a particularly hard boss, and she's a unique boss. Like, for Sigma 2, she is... Oh, don't eat me, old lady! What's with the Dalsim arms? Fucking hell. What's with the weird back fronds? God. Look at this Dalsim shit. Like, I've nearly killed her already. She's not particularly hard, and if you're gonna spam a health items like a cheater like me, it's, you know, it's, it's like no challenge at all. But what's really weird about this chapter is, first of all, they say Ayumi is like, this is her final fight, and you're like, I don't know enough about the lore to question that. And this boss is the only boss that you don't fight again as Ryu. All the other side bosses, you will fight as Ryu at some point later in this game. Just to ruin it for you. You'll see it in like, the next time I upload a piece anyway. Well, the next five times. I gotta get this to you. So, so this is important and wasn't explained in the vanilla version of the game. Just she just showed up and was like giving it to giving that item to Ryu to make his sword better, and you were like, "Who the fuck is this? Why is she here?" <laughs> is this teaser? Who is it? It's Kasu. I think. Oh no. And now she's gone. Yeah, I don't know why Kasumi. Kasumi shows up twice in this game and she just shows up to be mysterious and then disappears. So. <laughs> I'll play three one day, I swear. Yeah.